Greetings folks, I'm Guy Allen, editor of Unique Cars magazine. With me is Mark, as in Higgo, as in Higgins. Good evening, sir. Good evening, how are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Now, so we're kind of running our own little event today. We are, Which indeed. is just um, a, a bunch of cars from the HDT owners in Victoria. Yes. Yeah, um, fabulous cars. We've managed to get um, all three colour schemes of the original VC HDT. Yep. Which yeah. is a bit special. It is, it is. And if you're a St Kilda fan or a St George's fan, you'll love it even more. Red, white and black. Absolutely, yep. Back in 1980, as I found out this morning, I wasn't aware of this, you paid, wait for it, $20,000 for one of these things. That's a lot of money back then. Oh, hell yes. I mean, you could actually get a family six for half that. Yes. Yeah, and... You could buy a home, or right. close to a home, in the outer suburbs of Melbourne, Sydney, that for probably not a lot more. Yeah. yeah. So it was an expensive car, yeah, but it was sure a special was. car. It was a special car, and it, did re it wasn't just all smoke and mirrors and stickers, not was it? Not at all, no, far no. from it, far but, from it. But they actually handled. They did, they, they handled, steered. they went, yeah. and it really took, took it up to the European cars at the time, and yeah. it gave people, motoring enthusiasts, a real alternative to a European car. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, yeah, it really did. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Significant cars. So yes. the reason we're shooting these things is it's 40 years. That's right. Who, who didn't time fly? <laughs> time does fly when you're having fun, <laughs> yeah, as they absolutely. say. Absolutely. So this is something to look forward to in the coming this year. Yep. Um, in the meantime, we've got an issue out at the moment, which has a home-built GDHO replica in it. Yes. Now, I love this story because the bloke who owns it is in Queensland. We found this nest of car owners, muscle car owners in Queensland, which are, they're wonderful people. And this is one of them. Yep. And he bought this as a box of bits from the shelf. And he said to me, I could never dream of owning a real phase three. No. Well, you and me both. Essentially, I bought it as a project back in 2016. Mm. It was advertised as a project car. Uh, which got me interested, so I looked through uh, what he had and what he'd already accomplished. I thought that was probably right for me. So, so, so you got it from someone who was a restorer themselves? or No, he actually was a guy that owned, an older guy that owned a wrecking yard. So he collected lots and lots of parts over the years. He obviously had uh, bits and pieces from Fairmonts, Fairlanes and the like. Um, he'd gathered up a lot of things and then I think he ran out of time and mm. money to finish it. So once I'd seen what he had for sale and the images of how much work he put into collecting parts, I thought it would be was just right. Um, so that was the one I went up to Harvey Bay and towed it home. And what was the car when you bought it? What was it originally? It's a GDHO replica now. Yeah, it was just a Falcon 500 sedan. V8? No, it was a six. It was originally a six, but it was bought as a shell. There was just the hanging panels. It was all there was on it. There was no dash, no seats, no carpet, no cable, no wiring, no brake lines, no fuel lines. There was nothing. It was sitting on dollies. No suspension. It was just a just a shell. And that's, that was it. That's a massive job. It was a huge job. Did anyone ask you if you're crazy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, when you know what you want in the end, when you know, you can always picture the old HO Falcon that you've always wanted and you think, well, every everything you do, you feel like you're getting that little bit closer and a little bit closer. So, so. so why was this particular car the one that you wanted? Well, there was a lot of rusty rubbish out there for sale um, and I didn't want to go down the path of having to have a rusty body that was going to take a fortune and a lot of time to get done. So. This one essentially was a completely rust-free, rust-free body that had a lot of good, hard-to-get bits like the interior and so on. So I thought that was um, that was the one to get. So fast forward to the car being completely finished. Why that particular colour? Why the GDHO? What does it mean to you? Well, the GDHO was something that I'd always, I guess, like most Ford guys. That's that's the one to have. Back in the day when I was in high school, I got taken for a ride in a GT um, that was offered to me for sale, but could never afford it. But after having ridden in one, I, that, was it. that was that was it. I, I had to I had to have one. Mark, 
Mark, it's taken us months to get to this because you were on this trip. You joined us yes. up at uh, where were we? Sunny Parks, that's yep. right, for the 50th anniversary. anniversary of Man on the Moon. <laughs> yeah. What car connection this has, I will never know, but it was tenuous at best, but it was your idea we go up and do this. Yeah. There was a car show there for there it, was. so that was you know, as good an excuse as I I knew that. I knew. <laughs> well, actually, I was hoping that. <laughs> so we went up there, somewhat to the bafflement of the organisers that a national magazine would go up to their car show for yes. the moon landing, but what the hell. Anyway, along the way, we dropped into Griffith. This was a yeah. long held promise to go and see this family. It was a family car. The person who originally owned it had uh, had passed away, yes, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, but the family kept the Tirana. Yeah, which is and, lovely. That's really, really it nice. It is lovely. And they actually, they bought the car second hand, but they knew about the car. Their school teacher drove it That's initially. Right. That's right, yes. But in amongst all of this, there's a very, very special story. Exactly. Which is? A great backstory, and that is it's a, one of six cars ever made to this specification. As we found out, when the Peter Brock Monaro was being auctioned, and Joe Felice, who ran the race team, but also the marketing department at Holden, told us about this special car, and it was a marketing car, or a motor show car, yeah. promotional motor show yeah. car. Yeah. yeah, so they'd grabbed half a dozen cars off the production line, took them down to the HDT Skunk Works, put all sorts of stuff on them, and the, the people who owned it had no idea until they went to get something fixed. That's right. And none of the parts that were supposed to go on this car fitted. No. And they thought, hello, what's going on here? So it's a long and involved story. We've got the owner, we've got the whole thing, so yes. let's have a bit of a look. The car was purchased from Leap Motors. Yeah. Uh, originally by Stan and June Dunn. Okay. Which lived in the same township as us. Right. We had information that it was getting traded back in. Okay. And the deal was done with my brother as his first car. So your spies motor. at the dealership? Yeah, had spies in the dealership. So, um, and we knew uh, Stan and June Dunn pretty well. Okay. And okay. so we all knew the car rather well. And she worked at Leeton High School. So all it did was run into Leeton and back from Stanbridge. Right. So you've known this thing all its production life, basically. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Parents took over the car when Peter passed away in 82. Okay. It was never going to be sold. Dad no used it as a memory of Peter. Yeah. He's just cherished it and looked after it and drove it to football. Everybody always wanted to purchase the car off Dad, yeah. right up until the day I took over it. Everybody wanted the car because they knew it was in pristine condition, looked after, never been flogged, yeah. and uh, just totally babied all its life. Peter babied it when he had it. It's a 253 four-speed, yeah. GTS dash, unbeknown to us, the trouble started when I took over the ownership of it. There was no brakes on the car, so we had to get a master cylinder for it. Um, and we ordered a standard SL master cylinder at the time, and it didn't fit. Right. It didn't match up. And we thought, what's going on here? And then um, our parts guy ordered an SLR master cylinder for it and fitted straight on. So we thought, hmm, something different. Then we put new springs all around the car and we ordered standard springs for it. They didn't fit. Right. So he said, well, we'll do the same thing. And we ordered SLR springs for it and they fitted straight in, which confused us more. And it wasn't until it was all finished and we took it to a Tirana Legends function at Kyabram where Joe Felice was attending. He was the marketing manager and the manager of the HDT Holden Racing Team. Right. Okay. And he filled us in that when the L LX came out, he would have it as a... Holden told him he wanted six vehicles to dress up as a promotional vehicle. And so all the boys from HTT went to Holden, grabbed six SL Tiranas, which were basically standard, stock standard. Some were automatics and... Um, Joe and his team had the job of dressing them up. So what they did, they put vinyl roofs on them, uh, upgraded the brakes to SLR brakes, changed the discs, put SLR front ends in them, and put four speeds and GDS dashes in. That's a pretty comprehensive makeover. It's not just a dress up, is it? No, and it, what 
they were virtually sleepers because they had the SLR hubcaps and um, they piled them into a truck and they took them to Albury for a, a drive day, a demonstration day, where Peter Brock and Colin Bond attended apparently. It was only for the dealers, it wasn't open to the public, it was no. only open to the Holden dealers at the time. Yeah. Then they, um, instead of trucking them back to Melbourne, they offered them to the dealers, right. which the general manager of Leeton Motors purchased this car and took it back to the, sat it on his showroom and then uh, Stan and June Dunn bought it. <laughs> Unbeknown to anybody, no one knew the story yeah. until Joe told us. Not even my parents, my brother, yeah, yeah. my brother that worked for Holden. Uh, it was just, Joe checked out the serial numbers yeah. and looked at it and yeah. went right over it with us and felt the roof and he said, it's original, this is one of the cars. But the next issue of the magazine, very, very special car in there. Mm. The last ever Ford Cobra. Yes. Number 400. Number 400. Uh, hard top, XC hard top. Yes. And uh, here's the other thing about it. This is the most unlikely marriage of people you'll ever come across. The bloke who owned the car had owned it for decades. Um, he was only the second owner, I think, whatever. That's right, yes. And he got together with Howard Astor. Now, if you know Howard Astor's name, you'll know that he builds these big, hairy, dangerous street machines. Yes. He does not do concourse restorations. No. Guess what? This was his first restoration. And what a hell of a restoration. <laughs> Unbelievable restoration. Like he, did, he, he was very careful not to over-restore it. Quite yes. the opposite. It was meant to be a showroom-looking car. Uh, of course, they took it to Summonats, as you do, and won one. the restoration class. <laughs> Unfair. The bloke who owns it has since gone on to work in the car restoration industry because right. he effectively apprenticed himself to Howard uh, while wonderful? they were building a yeah, car. That's isn't that great? great? It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. But that's not all because we've also got a rather special Volvo in oh, this, yes. in this yes. issue too. Yes. Um, it's the car that was rallied by Ross Dunkerton in the Repco Reliability Trial. Yep. We all know that the Repco Reliability Trial was won by Peter Brock and the Holden Dealer Team 123. It's the event that put the Commodore on people's shopping list because yes. the Commodore, when yeah. it first came out, not many people wanted to buy it. Yeah. Then yeah. it won the Repco, yeah. then people flocked into Holden showrooms and the rest is history. The car that came forth, and it's totally forgotten about, was this bloody Volvo. Oh, this bloody Ross Volvo. <laughs> and yeah, Ross Duncan and would describe it like that too, <laughs> exactly. I'm sure. It gave them more grief than you could shake a stick at. Part of it was a known goal because the people who prepared the car put too much stiffening in the suspension, so yep. just eight shock absorbers like you and I eat popcorn. Yep. Um, it had some lurid stories, like <laughs> caught fire. There was all sorts of other oh, stuff, like literally caught fire. Yes. Um, so it's a fantastic story. Exactly. I love that.